Hello Degenerates and welcome to another Duck Hunt Guide. This is going to be a very, very short, quick add-on. I consider this an add-on to the old Duck Hunt Recovery Guide that I made a pretty long time ago at the beginning of Smash Ultimate's life cycle. Um, recently I did get a question um, from uh, Velstick that he was asking about how you can use the can to help blow yourself up and recover indefinitely with that. Kind of similar to the banjo grenade trick, at least in terms of theory on how it works. Basically, you bring out the explosive, you let it explode on yourself, and then from that you could just keep going on and on and on. Of course, there are some caveats to it that I'll get into later, um, but this was a technique that you could use back in Smash 4, and you are able to use it again in here. I did just um, experiment a little bit around with it and kind of see how it works. It is slightly different from the way that you pull it off um, in Ultimate compared to how you did it in Smash 4, but the idea is still the same. Um, but I do think um, just kind of with the way that edge guarding works here, there might be a little bit more limitations to it before but of course the the one thing that it will do is like you know extending the amount of time that you can recover core that that's going to be there no matter what and i do have to talk about certain phases of it because it, it will change depending on what percentage your character is at before i do get in that though of course um your favorite thing to see complete shilling uh, we did create a new shirt this is a uh, carried by dinner um, new art created by muppet uh basically found this hilarious image that I thought was absolutely amazing uh, that I wanted to do an interpretation of it with kind of uh, my duck hunt dog. So this is it. You're going to find a link to this in the description below as of right now. No discount codes or anything like that. Uh, but I did want to highlight, so we do have like the regular shirts, the V-necks. Um, we also have the die-cast stickers too if you just want to put these and slap it somewhere. Uh, we also do have an alternate version of it with like this larger print of it. So if you wanted a more high-res uh, version of it so you can see the duck properly and the shrimp and all that. Uh, definitely when you get the shirt itself, um, if you get this version you'll have a much better view of it. It's just a little hard to do with just the limited imaging here. We also got the hoodies, we got the regular, we got the premiums, just qualities can be a little bit better on the premium one. Uh, we also got mugs, this is kind of the perfect one to have. Also phone cases too. Um, we also got uh, canvas prints as well and posters. And then uh, this one's kind of the perfect uh, wife beater one. This is the first time I've ever done one of these. <laughs> it just it didn't really fit with all the other shirts that I had. Um, and yeah, we also got women's fits as well, sweatshirts. And then we also have the sweatshirt version of the larger one as well. Um, but yeah, if there's any other forms of this that you're interested in seeing, please do let me know. And then um, basically I can just... Uh, quickly whip it up and then throw it on there because there's a lot of really good options that I can do. So like tote bags or something that I can add um, and some other things. Uh, the pillow as well that you've seen in some of the other ones. Didn't make that with this one just yet. Uh, but yeah, no, let me know if you're interested in seeing any other versions of these and then I will get those made. All right, so now let's talk about the reason why that you guys actually clicked on the video. So of course we're gonna be talking about um, the can recovery where you're gonna blow yourself up. Uh, basically, the goal is that you're going to be peeing in it enough times that you're going to end up in the explosion when it explodes. And um, by getting hit by it, it's going to refresh your up B and all that other good stuff. So, um, back in Smash 4, what you did was like you pinged it three times, then you up B'd, and then you went into it. Um, in this game, you want to do it uh, four or five times, so I can kind of show you what it looks like now. And then there you go. Um, so, as you can kind of see, it does take quite a lot of time, um, starting from over here, um, the explosion ended up here. So if you want um, a good view of that, you know, you're going a pretty far distance away. Um, so that is going to limit you on some stages. Uh, back in Smash 4, the can didn't travel nearly as far, so you'd kind of be somewhere around here. Um, so you need a stage with large blast zones. Um, I will be showing off demonstrations of how it works against different stages, uh, just because like, you know, something with like Pokemon Stadium or um, to a degree town and city, um, those I think are going to limit you quite a bit. Um, and also if we look at the height difference, it is um, basically from here all the way down to the bottom. So. Let's see, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's about like, you're gonna be falling down about six units as well. So the good thing is height differential wise, um, this is pretty good for being low, um, just because like you don't have to be, even if you're pretty close to the blast zone, you should be able to get hit by this and survive. So the other thing to keep in mind is as my percentage is going up, I'm going to be launched higher. So. 
So that way um, I could keep doing it again over and over again. Um, the one thing, of course, you need to make sure is like when you're at a, around 150%, uh, there's a good chance that it might just straight up kill you. And so there, I forgot to do the can. Um, so let's try that again one more time. There, I messed up. See, yeah. You gotta make sure that you're really on point with your can. So shoot it four times. And then just do it right over Duck Hunt himself. And then I forgot to do the can press again. <laughs> we'll get it. But yeah, at least this is a pretty good visual so you can kind of see exactly how far you're gonna travel each time. Uh, the other thing too is on those last two ones, I wasn't really DI'ing in there, um, but the, you do need to make sure you're DI'ing. If you do the no DI, uh, when you get hit by the can, you kind of go at that diagonal angle. So if you forget to do that, you actually might kill yourself extremely early. So um, that is a very big thing to keep in mind. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is, um, at least in terms of where we are on the stages, let's just do um, a fixed one. So keep in mind that zero is the center of FD. So you're pretty much going from the blast zone of FD over here um, to get exploded by it over here. So definitely stages are going to play a pretty big factor in how well this is going to work just because like you know you're going to be all the way over here and yeah so i'm not so if you keep your double jump you're going to be able to do it over and over again oh whoops i forgot to have uh, up here. yeah i also want to make sure i don't reset it just so i can keep the percentages that we're at And I'll see something else that I just realized is because the can falls so much faster when you do those um, end pings, um, you can actually um, uh, you can actually just like ping it way ahead of time, have the can be way above you, so that way it's covering you from when you're going high, and then uh, you'll be safe. Of course, um, because this uh, battlefield is over here, it does make it a little bit harder to judge. But next, we'll we'll go on that stage. Yeah, I see. Yeah, see there, that's so like when you're around that like 145, I believe staling is off for me. Um, so that's the reason why that was going to kill. But yeah, if you have a fresh can, do keep that in mind. If the, the good thing is chances are your can is going to be pretty stale at this moment. So when you're around that, at one four, as long as you're below 150, you should live it. And then if you're very low and then you DI it, um, you should be able to live that as well. So let's just do it one more time with the DI because we're not going to die here. Oops. Yeah, so there you can kind of see the DI difference. So basically, it made a difference of about like three to four units on how horizontal that I went. So keep that in mind. All right, so here we are on a battlefield. Um, I've staled the can three times, and I'm going to kind of show you what the recovery scenario is going to look like. So I'm just going to F myself. I'm going to just kind of trolls on first. I'm going to F smash myself. And then, yeah. So those are pretty much the scenarios that it's going to look like. So the higher percentage are, um, the more infinite that you're just going to be able to do it. Um, pretty much the main thing with it is you only will be able to use this once realistically just because your recovery with the can is going to take up pretty much the entire space from the blast zone to the ledge of the stage over there. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is um, I, I staled the can three times, which is most likely what you're going to be encountering whenever you're using it. Um, but overall, you're going to notice it's going to put you in a very good position to get a second mix up off of it. And, you know, if you did want to kind of give yourself more options when recovering, that's a very good way to do it. And you don't even have to burn your double jump with it. So that's the other good thing about it. And it kind of sets itself up to be uh, a deterrent for anybody that's trying to edge guard you. So, for example, we're going to have an SF smash me here. But, you know, I didn't go far enough there. Let's go a little bit further back. But yeah, see, <laughs> it's really hard to find, like, a good distance for this.
they have seen. In that case, that's just too much there. So, pretty much your explosion is going to end up somewhere around the ledge over here, which, you know, that may not be something that you want. Um, you're going to want something to kind of, like, hit you by the low profile. Like there, you see, wasn't low enough. And now I did the wrong way. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. But yeah, as you see, there's not too many instances where you're going to actually have that can set up in a scenario where you're just, you're going to be able to use it. Um, just because nothing really sends you far enough away uh, where you'll be in a position where you won't be able to get the can. However, if you are below the stage, you know, there is definitely a real scenario where you could use it. So let me reset my percentage so we can do that. Oh yeah, that's the other thing too, you can do wall jumps to help yourself recover. So, as you can see, just the space that you that's required for it to work is kind of hard. Um, I would still say it's worth going for and setting up, just to kind of give you yourself that secondary option. So like, let's say this nest was ready to go off stage and edge guard me. Um, I can kind of get behind the can and just rely on that explosion to just um, keep me alive. The one thing to keep in mind is like, you know, if you do have yourself um, set to something around like 150%, then that's pretty much going to be like death percent for you. Because um, you're pretty much only living this with like good DI. So like there, I died. Um, because I did like the ZSS di DI there, then I lived. So um, do keep that in mind. Yeah, like there, you're, you just want to hold down uh, whenever you're getting hit by can and Centers like this, where it's like, if I hold in, I'm going to just die up right there. Um, so, just keep that in mind when you're getting hit. 150% is generally going to be the percentage that you're going to die at. Alright, so here's going to be a pretty good example of how you can kind of use the can to help extend your recovery. Um, pretty good to use on uh, uh, wall stages like this or anything where you can just, like, bounce it off the, the ledges here. So, I'll kind of show that off briefly. So... So there I completely messed it up, but um, the idea behind something like this is... And then yeah, I didn't get the air dodge in there in time, but um, pretty much that's something you can do is just, um, you know, if you're too low to make it, you can just plan to survive off the, the, the wall bounce. So there. Now I'm too low because I didn't get the wall bounce there. So you gotta do you do have to make sure that you're aiming it for that specifically. The other thing too is you can get moments like that where it, the can itself won't change directions. Which is like honestly one of the worst things that can happen for you. <laughs> um, so you do need to be careful about moments like that happening too. Throwing white clouds so weak right there. So I do have stale moves on. So. So yeah, there. Unfortunately, was a little bit too early with um, up being. That's the other thing you can do too, probably. Um, it'd take a lot of practice, but figuring out a timing where you can do it underneath there. Um, but it's just something that you'd have to figure out. So, as you can tell on this stage, unfortunately, not exactly the best for using this, especially since the platforms can be really up, um, can be really tall. So, you know, that can always mess up your trajectory up there. Um, so this isn't really going to be a stage you're going to be utilizing it for. Um, just if you want to do those niche uh, wall things over there. Alright, so instead of showing you guys off um, exactly how it interacts off of each stage, there are some um, pretty good brief things that I can bring up over here. Um, just by using this uh, Stage Blast Zone Visualizer tool. So, 
The red one is FD, the, the blue one is Smashville. So Smashville, the good thing about this one compared to FD is that um, it, the, the blast zones are the same size away from the stage itself as FD's is. Um, just about roughly. If you look at how much it shrinks here and how much it shrinks there, it's, it's about the same. But overall, that stage is uh, smaller. Uh, so with keeping that in mind, um, you're going to recover against it pretty similar how you would FD, it's just you don't have as much stage at the bottom to bounce the can off of, so there's a good chance you need to aim for these areas over here. If you aim for under, then you might just get trapped under there, so that's something that you'll just have to practice over there. Um, but basically, you, you'll get one shot at it, same as FD, but only if you're like right next to the blast zone. If you're, if you're not about to hit the side blast zone, it's pretty much not going to be something you're going to be able to use. Um, next up, we'll do Yoshi's Island. So this is, of course, uh, the melee st Oh, wait, no, this is the Brawl stage. So this is not legal in most places that I go to anymore. Um, however, this one does utilize the wall, so it will bounce off, and then it will be uh, more or less you're going to be falling over here somewhere. Um, the good thing with this one is... Uh, uh, well, actually, so horizontally, it's a lot shorter, so I don't think you're really going to be able to utilize this on this one. You're basically exclusively going to be bouncing this off the wall and try to recover low, but um, again, you can see the blast zones here are a lot smaller, so this is not a generous one to um, this tactic at all, so I would say kind of avoid using it here. Uh, Yoshi's Island Brawl is not going to be a stage that you really want to use with it. Uh, Pokemon Stadium, uh, Stadium 1 and 2, I believe, are basically the same. Yeah, so Blast Zone-wise, uh, Stadium 1 and 2 are the same. Um, however, of course, the biggest thing that changes is the part underneath it. So, uh, at least my region, we play on Stadium 2, so this one is not going to be as kind to it, just because, you know, there's not, like, a nice slope here, you can get caught under there. Uh, so basically, you're going to ping the can, um, and you're going to aim it for the ledge area, so you can get that um, back off thing. Uh, the good thing, uh, the thing about this one is, you know, this stage does extend further up. The blast zone's a little bit larger to the side. However, you're a lot closer to dying, so this is going to be another one where you're going to be relying on it to bounce off it, or you're relying on this to go high, but you're not really doing that on this stage too often. So, Stadium, not really the most viable as well. Uh, Kalos. So this one, you do have slightly larger blast zones compared to FD. Uh, so because of that, this one is going to work off a little bit better. And because it is just a straight wall here, really easy to plan out on where it's going to bounce off. So just keep in mind, practice the trajectory there, and then you can have yourself blow up, then end up here, and then probably just like do an auto cancel nair over here if you plan it well. Um, however, you know, if your opponent's ready for it, they can hard punish you for going to the platforms here. Uh, so keep that in mind, but you could also get blown up and then tech the wall and then immediately grab ledge too. So a lot of good things you can do with it. Um, Kalos is definitely going to be one of your best stages to utilize this. Um, a lot of regions don't use Innova, um, including my region as well. Um, but as you can see, pretty generous as well since you mostly have a wall and then even a little bit of a slant there. Um, and it's not that much smaller than FD, um, but that this little minute difference could make all the difference between you dying and not. Uh, but overall, I would say Kalos and Unova, pretty good stages to use it for. Um, Battlefield, um, I just kind of showed off that one. So the blast zone sizes are actually the same exact as I didn't even realize the stage was as well. Um, it's just ceiling wise, um, because the ceiling is taller, as long as you DI the can correctly, you are going to be living a little bit more. So on this stage, it is more viable to use it uh, compared to FD. However, just keep in mind, you basically get one shot to use this and then you're trying to use your can to help juke them out if you're recovering high with it. Uh, next up is the Yoshi Story Melee. Um, as you can see, you know, the blast zones are a lot smaller on here, so uh, this stage, I don't even know if you could realistically set it up. Um, it's only going to be wall bounce, goes off, and then you're going to blow yourself to hopefully end up somewhere in the middle area and just avoid any type of ledge trap they're doing here. Keep in mind, if they're playing the right character, like somebody like Fox, they could short hop back here and then run up, up, up air you there, so, you know, its usefulness is going to depend on who you're fighting against as well. A uh, Lilat. Um, this one obviously sucks. <laughs> um, the good thing about this um, is, from what I remember, the can is pretty generous about um, pinging backwards against this. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. I haven't practiced this in a while. I never play on this stage, so <laughs> not an expert on Lilat by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but yeah, basically, you should be able to ping it off this so that way you can at least do the backward stuff. So, and ping it off of that. But keep in mind, blast zones are smaller. So, in the, it, the scenarios where you would use it, I don't even think you could. 
Um, so, Lilat, I would say, don't bet on it, but, you know, you could at least tech on the, the bottom over here if you really needed to do that. And then last but not least, Town and City. Um, I didn't re I forgot that the bla side blasts here were shorter. Um, because, it, um, the, and the bottom half is shorter too. Actually, this might be... Um, besides the fact that the ceiling is taller, um, so that way you can live longer by DIing in, this actually might be one of the worst ones to do it on. Uh, just because, you know, you don't have a lot, you basically have the least amount of space on here compared to the other stages, so... Um, it's just gonna be really hard to set up a scenario where you're gonna be able to actually get the hit from the can itself. Um, if, you re if you're recovering from very high, then you can do it. But outside of that, um, I just, I would say the only stages you realistically want to practice this for, uh, practice it for FD, uh, Smashville potentially, uh, then I would say Kalos and then Unova if that's legal for you and Battlefield. Those are, um, so I think for most places, I do FD, Battlefield, um, Kalos, and then... Uh, Smashville as well. Those are the four stages that you should just practice on and find various techniques you could do it. Um, I would say that Lilat might have something really interesting if you can play with the stage well, um, but those are the only stages that I do recommend uh, playing around with with this technique. So uh, once again, uh, just kind of going through this, it is not as useful as it was in Smash 4 just because that one didn't require nearly as much horizontal space to make it work. However, it still does work here, so keep in mind the golden roll remembers four or five pings, and then make sure as you up B, you just start pinging it again like crazy, and then it'll start to blink, and then it falls down fast enough that it should catch up to you should you have enough blast zone to work with, and if you, you know it's horizontal enough. And then um, as far as the wall pings go, it's going to vary greatly with how far above the can is for you, but uh, keep in mind that the can should be fairly high above you when you do that, uh, when you do the wall pings, and then you're looking to kind of go forward and then backwards and fall on it. So um, that's going to be it for this video, generally shorter than the ones that I do, um, but as you can see, this one's a little bit more complicated to do than the others, and it's not really a universal technique you could use just because it requires so much space to do, but I do think there are a lot of mind game potentials for a technique like this, so like that way somebody expects you to do it, but then you can at least air dodge the ledge, um, and then, you know, if you've conditioned it where when you get exploded you always go to mid stage, they might be there, so you might be able to get back on for free, so... Um, and then also if you're mixing it up with high recoveries too, then it's like, oh, are they going to blow themselves up or do I have to be ready to catch and intercept them? Um, so you could do a lot of good mind games with that. So probably the high recoveries would be the most useful thing for it besides the ones where it's like, I cannot make this back. Um, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, just quick updates on things that I'm working on. I am still working on the Byleth uh, guide there. Um, I've, I've got to play a bit more, watch a bit more footage, so I think I have a pretty good idea how they function. It's just, um, I'm trying to, I'm sort of figuring out the exact things I want to talk about that hasn't been discussed already or hasn't been discussed well. Um, so once I get those out of the way, then I will release that. Um, it is going to be pretty similar to this, so just very, very raw, very basic with explaining everything. Uh, Byleth is at least a very easy character to explain. So there's not too much to them, it's just they do have a lot more intricacies to them with the way that they function um, in order to succeed with them. It's most They're mostly a hard read and precision character, that's kind of what it boils down to. Uh, so with that said, that's it for this. Hopefully you guys found this useful, hopefully you get uh, one highlight clip because basically um, this type of technique is a highlight clip <laughs> for the most part. It will have a very small niche use, but it's not going to be anything that's going to define the meta for Duck Hunt. So, that's going to be it for this, and with that said, you guys take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.